All right, let's work another system response example where, again, we're working with system responses using frequency domain concepts. So again, we're going to have an input signal, we're going to have a system, we're going to characterize these signals and systems in the frequency domain to easily write down the output of the system. So here's the system we're going to work with. It consists of a sinusoid, sine of t, voltage source, which is driving a full wave rectifier block to yield the voltage signal x of t. And then this x of t is then exciting an RC circuit with um, resistor and capacitor listed there to result in an output signal y of t. What we're going to do is we are going to find y of t. So how would we go about figuring out an equation for y of t? In doing this, we're going to leverage some things that we've worked on previously. The first thing we're going to leverage is a representation for the signal x of t. So if we think about sine of t, sine of t oscillates up and down, has positive and negative values. After it goes through the full wave rectifier, though, x of t looks like a signal like this. All of the negative um, parts of the sinusoid have been flipped up to be positive, so it looks like a signal like this. And since it's a periodic signal, we know that we can write down a complex exponential Fourier series representation for it. And in fact, in a previous video, we actually derived exactly what the exponential Fourier series representation of sine of t is. So this equation right here is what we came up with in a previous video. So if you want to go see all the nitty gritty details about that, go back to that previous example. But we did find that we could write x of t in this form and these dn's right here are the exponential Fourier series coefficients for this signal. So at this point, we're almost kind of starting the problem right here. I now know what this signal is in the time domain, and I've kind of broken it down into frequency components. This signal is now entering this linear system to result in y of t. So what we would like to do is to be able to write down y of t. So the good thing is that's a pretty easy thing to do. We've learned that this representation for x of t is very important because we've written it as a whole bunch of numbers times signals of the form e to the st. And we know how signals of the form e to the st come through linear systems. They come through just as they came in. If e to the st goes in, e to the st comes out. The only thing that happens is that they get multiplied by a complex number. I just noted I had just a little error there. That should have been a, a plus there. When we compute the d's, we project those against e to the minus quantities. But once we're all done, the actual representation is dn e to the jn omega naught t. So that should have been a plus sign right there. I got that corrected. All right, so back to what we were talking about. This representation is very nice because it's written as weighted signals of the form e to the st. If we put e to the st into a system, e to the st is exactly what comes out, except it gets multiplied by a complex number. In this case, the complex number is h of jn omega naught. Remember what h is? h is the transfer function of our system. So if we just knew what the transfer function of the system was, we could evaluate it at the point jn omega naught, and then we could write down y of t in the time domain very, very easily. So let's go ahead and work on that. Let's figure out what the transfer function of this system is. We just need to know the transfer function. So to figure out the transfer function of this system, I need an equation that relates the input and the output. So I can do that pretty easily doing a KVL loop. If I do a KVL loop, if I think of this as the current I of t in that loop, going around, I can write minus x of t plus 20 times I of t plus the voltage across the capacitor that completes my loop. So the sum of those voltages has to equal zero. So here's my KVL equation I'm starting with. I also know how voltages across capacitors are related to currents through the capacitor, and that's this equation right here. In general, the voltage across a capacitor is 1 over C, the integral for all time of the current flowing through that capacitor. So I can write that equation right there. If I take this equation and take the derivative of both sides, that puts a capital D right here, and it gets rid of the integral, and the 1 over 1 half flips up to be a 2, I can write this nice equation right here. So this is a nice kind of differential equ equation relating I and Y. If I plug that equation in this equation right here into this equation right here, I can get rid of the I, and I can write X of T equals 20 times one-half dy of t, so I've just used this relationship to get rid of the i of t, plus y of t. 
So now I have a differential equation that describes the input x of t and the output y of t. So let's work on that just a little bit. So here's what we just had on the previous slide. If I do a little bit of algebra, multiply the 20 times 1 half, put the flip things around so it's kind of outputs on this side and inputs on this side, I have kind of the general form of my differential equation I like to see. And by looking at this, I can go ahead and pick off now what the P of S and Q of S polynomials are. So where does the P of S come from? P of S is on this side. There's just a 1 right there, so that's a 1. And then Q of S is the polynomial over on this side, so that is 10S plus 1. So remember, you replace the Ds with Ss, and then you pick off the polynomial that describes that S polynomial. So this is the transfer function. The transfer function for that circuit we were just looking at is 1 over 10s plus 1. What do I care about? I care about the quantity transfer function evaluated at jn omega naught. In this particular example, omega naught is equal to 2. So jn omega naught is actually j2n. If I want to evaluate the transfer function at that point, that means find all the s's and replace them with j2n. So that's what I've done. That s right there got replaced with J2n, so it turned into Jn20. Okay, so as we continue this, that means I can write y of t, now that we know that missing piece, here was the missing piece, h of Jn omega naught, we now know that that's this complex number, 1 over Jn20 plus 1, times all the stuff that we had originally. So this was dn e to the Jn omega naught t due to the x of t, this was the complex multiplier, that we needed to figure out, we figured it out. So this final boxed equation is an equation in the time domain that represents the output signal of that system. And we used Fourier series techniques to come up with this equation. So this is kind of an ugly equation right here. It's like, what in the world does this look like? If you actually take the time to go plot this in MATLAB, what you'll see is a signal like this, a signal that has some DC content boosted up, and it kind of ripples up and down. And what's happening is we have this periodic ripple. Remember, the input to the RC circuit was this cosine that was rectified, right? So as that always positive signal ramps up, the capacitor charges up, and then when it goes to zero, it starts decaying. So this capacitor is charging up, charging down, charging up, charging down. And this is kind of what you would see if you took the time to plot this equation for y of t.